Okay, so if you remember, we set up the div called thumb to hold our thumbnail image. So I'm going to target dot thumb, which is inside of dot holder. So that's a width I'm going to set to 140 pixels. I'm going to set the height to 120 pixels. And if you press refresh or click inside design view, you'll see that the div tag expands to fit those dimensions. Now all we need to do is nudge it into place and we'll do that with some margins. So I'm going to set a margin of top, margin dash top, and I'm going to set that to 29 pixels to push away from the holder div. And so that's 29 pixels pushed from the top and we're going to set a margin left of 43 pixels. So it's going to push away on the left hand side of the holder div 43 pixels. Okay, this isn't necessary, we don't need to do this, but I'm going to put it in anyway. It's a margin dash right attribute, and I'm going to set that to 42 pixels, just so you can see uh, how Dreamweaver simulates the margins there. So we can know it's nice and snugly fitting inside that area, the left and the right and the top. Okay, it's fantastic. Okay, now I left a slight gap on the left and the bottom of that div, so that when we insert the thumbnail image, there's going to be a slight, you can see the slight, uh, inset background, the grey background there, just to give it a look like it's slightly inset into that Polaroid. Okay, now I'm going to click inside of the thumbnail div and we're going to insert our thumbnail image. So I've gone to insert image, I've clicked on images folder. Now we'll have a look inside the thumbs, but here's the large version of the building image. And uh, that's what we're going to link to to make the gallery work. And notice that that's 500 by 300. Now I'm going to go inside the thumbnail folder. I'm going to click on that building image, which is 140 by 120, and click OK. And I'm going to set some alternative text there for accessibility. And I'll click building thumb and press OK. And that will now insert the image into the center of that Polaroid. OK, so now we've inserted the image, let's have a look inside of Firefox. So I'm going to preview that in the browser now. And we can see that it doesn't appear inside the browser the way it should do, or the way we have set it inside of Design View. OK, well, we need to set that right. So I'm going to go into CSS now. We're going to target the holder, the, the div that is encompassing that thumbnail image. And we're going to put a float attribute. So we're going to float it to the left and that will reset the margins that we've set for the thumbnail and it will push it away from the um, holder class correctly. So we can type in float colon left and semicolon and preview that again in the browser and there we go it appears just how we want it to be now. Okay, now once you float any element, um, if you want any elements to continue afterwards, you're going to have to contain that float. So we're going to set a clear float attribute now, and I'm going to type in br class equals, so it's a break class, and I'm going to call it clear float. And we're going to go into CSS and we're going to set the property for that. And what we're going to do is set it to clear both. OK, so we set the float left property to the holder class div. So it's really only going to affect the um, gallery div and also the wrapper div. So if we set a clear float property, which I have done now, I'm going to set it to clear both. And then when you press refresh in design view or click inside design view, you're going to see that it expands to contain that float. So it's expanded past the holder div and it's making sure that the wrapper div and the gallery div do not collapse. So essentially what that's done is reset us to the place where we was before we floated anything. Um, okay, so we need to put in a title. So we're going to put a title in just there and uh, we're going to go inside of our CSS document now and we're going to set a class for the title and what we're going to do is set a width and a height attribute so I'm going to type in width colon and I'm going to set it to a hundred and forty pixels which is the same width as the image okay so I'm going to set the height to uh, 40 pixels uh, which I think we can fit into that space and I'll click refresh and you'll see that the div appears there with 140 pixels of width and 40 pixels of height now all we need to do is again use the margins to put it into position. This time I'm going to set a auto margin. So I'm going to set it margin dash left colon auto margin dash right auto and that's going to fit it in the center of that Polaroid background there. 
Okay, I'm also going to set a margin top attribute. I want to push it away from that thumbnail div a little bit. So I'm going to set it margin dash top colon 15 pixels and the semicolon on the end. So I'm going to push that away, press refresh, and you'll see that it pushes slightly away by 15 pixels from the top of the thumbnail div. Okay, so it's time to put in a title, a description for the thumbnail image. So we'll go back into the source code and we're going to go inside of the class title, the div tag, and we're going to put in an h3 title tag. So I'm going to put in an opening h3 tag, I'm going to put a closing h3 tag, and in the center I'm going to type a tall building with a large balcony, just something to populate the area. And then I'm going to press refresh. And when we do, you'll see that it doesn't quite fit in the area, it's too large, and uh, it's pushing down slightly. And that's because there's default margin set for the H3 title tag, and any title tag for that matter. So we'll go inside of the CSS, and we'll create a new selector called dot .title H3. And I'm going to set the margins to zero, and that will take all of the margin out. So when I press refresh, you'll see that it drops, it drops into position there. Okay, so let's change the font family too. So I'm going to type in font dash family. And I'm going to set the font family to comic. And we're also going to set a font size while we're here. So I'm going to type in font dash size colon. I'm going to set that to 14 pixels and press refresh. And you'll see that it scales down to fit inside of that div area. And um, I'm going to set any overflow. If I don't want the any title to go in there that's going to come outside of the Polaroid image, so I'm going to set the overflow to hidden in H3, and I'm going to set the overflow to hidden inside of the title. So if there's any title that's too long, it will just hide the text that goes overflowing from that area. Okay, so I'm going to change the text color as well to pound three three three. It's a light grey color, and press refresh and I'm going to preview that in the browser to see what it looks like so I'll preview that in Firefox and we can see we pretty much got the finished Polaroid image with a title and a thumbnail okay we're doing well so far so let's go back into the source code now and what we're going to do is we're going to copy the holder class and everything inside of it and we're going to paste that over and over again because that's going to make up all of our gallery images now that they're in place all we need to do is swap out the image the thumbnail image and the title that goes with it so now that I've copied it I'm going to paste it and I'll do that by pressing control V and I'm going to do that another three times for this row and another four times for the second row so I'm going to do that seven times in total Okay, so when you press refresh, you'll see that it creates a second row automatically for us, and that's because we set the gallery width to 900 pixels. So anything that falls outside of that 900 pixel range will drop down to another level automatically. So here we are with our eight images, our eight Polaroid background images with our thumbnails. So what we need to do now is swap out the thumbnails for the new thumbnails. So here are all of the images inside the files panel. I'm going to expose the thumbnail images and I am going to click and drag over and uh, select all of the images that way. So click inside the thumbnail you want to change over. Use the point to file icon, click and drag it over to the image that you want it to be. And as you can see I'm doing that now. And one of the benefits of having Dreamweaver is the points of file icon. It's a wonder time saving device. You can use it to click and change out the source file of the image, uh, which I'm doing right now. Or you can highlight some text and use the points file icon to link to another HTML document within your uh, local source files. Now I'm going to preview this in Safari. I'm going to click and save all the changes and preview it in Safari to make sure it works and as we can see it's well set out we've got our background Polaroid images we've got our thumbnail images and our title text in place and any overflow of that title text will be hidden that's fantastic and what I'm going to do is pause the video and I'm going to change out all of the titles and make sure that they're relevant to the thumbnail images